asking for the world. I'm asking for the basics to survive. That's it. Those are the words of Jamaican hammer thrower Naoko Clunis, who took to social media to lament a lack of support. This is what she said. Nobody wants to talk about the lack of funding or sponsorships that track and field gets. If you are not ranked in the top five, people don't take you serious. I am ranked in the top 30 in the world, 27 to be exact. While some countries would jump at the opportunity to help develop my talent, not mine. They don't help with anything outside of airfare and stay at national representative meets. And yes, I've been pleading for assistance from the J3As, the JOA, even the minister, and no one is willing to help. How are athletes to survive? It costs me $120 for a massage and $150 for a Cairo, and I can only afford one, once a month. So when you all see athletes like me not getting to that next level or not performing up to standard, it's because we are not getting the help we need to be great. I am not asking for the world. I'm asking for the basic to survive. That's it. Well, in August, Clunis made history for Jamaica by becoming the first man or woman to compete in the Hammer Throw event at the World Championships. She finished 18th in qualifying, failing to make the final in Budapest. Her best mark was 58.00 meters, well off the automatic qualifying mark of 73.00. So Ricardo, I like to say you're the track and field man on the show. Your take on Naoka's cry for help. Yeah, well, first of all, let me start by saying that Clunis has um, tweeted Yes. subsequently to what we just showed you and uh, well she says for, since we first met this summer Auntie Grange speaking about the sports minister Olivia Babsy Grange has been nothing but a blessing as a result I sincerely apologize to her how the matter was portrayed and for any wounded feelings she may have felt I could have been more specific in my statement to break up the talk I am not in no way, shape or form fighting any local organizations. I'm stating facts on my situation. I wish it wasn't so, but it is what it is. I am doing my best with what I have, but I'm at the point where my best isn't enough to get me where I need to be. So I just thought I would get that That's out there. That's important, yes. Yeah, quite important. Here's the thing though, Mariah. There are a few issues at play here. So one is the specific situation for Nayoka Clunis, who is trying to get financial assistance um, to improve to the level that she feels her talent is capable of taking her. And she is not getting that support as we speak. But there's a bigger issue for me. Um, before I get to the bigger issue, though, as I understand it, and maybe this is why the apology has come to the, to the Minister Olivia Grange, I'm not yeah. sure. Um, but there is a National Athletes Insurance Plan. Okay. Um, it was only yesterday, incidentally, that Minister Grange was at a function and she was suggesting not enough athletes are joining that insurance plan. Do you know um, what it comprises of? I'm going to get to that shortly. So at this stage, apparently, only 1,300 athletes are joined onto the plan. Okay. And Minister Grange is saying, based on the number of athletes we have across sports, not just track and field now, um, you, we sh there should be more um, on that um, national insurance plan. Um, now, as I understand it, we're talking about um, life insurance, it's, well, it's group insurance for life, health, uh, and accident um, insurance. Yeah. I think it is what it is. As I understand it, this type of coverage can help with a few of the things that Nayoka suggested. Um, if you're talking about physio, if you're talking about... Cairo. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the chiropractor, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, massage therapy. Um, in some instances, depending on where you go, I guess. Nayoka is based overseas, though, 
And so I'm not sure if it extends to athletes who are based overseas. I don't know if they can pay and then reclaim um, no through the national insurance scheme. Um, but I'm not sure if Nayoka is even aware that well, that exists and that is something that she could potentially tap into. So that is one thing. But that's where I wanted to ask the question. You, mm -hmm. fo you found out about this yesterday? No. Or you knew I've, about I've, it? I've known about this since it came on, on stream. But I think, you know, Ricardo, some of the athletes are not made aware or these things Well, the, are... this is public knowledge. No, but, but you say it's public knowledge, right? But no, sometimes not everybody has the luxury of um, getting information like some of us do, like, you know, as some athletes. And I could say that first time, you know, I've grown up around um, athletes. You know, my sister plays in a team and all these different things. So things that we sometimes take for granted and think we know because of what we do, sometimes people are not aware of it. Yeah, and, and you know what, that could be right. I, I don't even want to go down that road because I think there is a bigger issue here. Um, and it is the issue of generally how support um, is given to athletes. And this now specifically speaking to the National Association, the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association. I'm very sure that the J3As will say that we help many athletes from time to time. Yeah? yeah. And that is fine. I'm very sure that they do. I do have an issue with the process, though, and part of it goes back to what you are talking about, Mariah, in terms of the athletes being aware of how they um, access the type of assistance that is available. Um, if you take, for example, the, the UK, they have a, a tier system. Um, where depending on the tier you fall in, there is a certain amount of support you can get. The criteria is clear, um, and so you know exactly how you apply for that. That system does not exist in Jamaica, and for me, that is a massive problem because that should exist. From a national association standpoint, I think the J3As has to get to a stage where it is saying we have this amount of money um, for athletes' financial assistance over a one-year period, a two-year period, a three-year period, whatever it is, um, we will be looking to support 30 athletes over this period. Yes. This is how you apply. Um, this is the criteria. This is where you need to be ranked. This is how close you need to be. Um, and make it very clear so that athletes like Nayoka Clunis um, can tap into those opportunities. At this stage, it doesn't exist. As far as I understand it, um, what, what happens now is if you need support, you, you write to the National Association, they may or may not respond to you, but there is no clear criteria. So it almost comes across as, well, this person knows that person, and so, yes, the support will go to that person. And in my opinion, that is not good enough. And I think that is the bigger conversation we need to be having and Nayoka, I think, has started that conversation. And I personally am happy that she has started the conversation. But this is only the beginning of where we, of how we go forward. Right. And, you know, even reading um, what she posted, right, Ricardo, mm -hmm. it's very, very painful. Because when you think about you go to chiropractors and you go to physios and all those different things, the cost that she quoted and the fact that she has to choose per month which one she goes to, I think it really, really, um, it gives us a picture of the problem at hand. And she feels as if uh, she can't reach her best and she can't do her best because she's really limited with the resources. And the thing is, you know, athletes always say that they do all these things to represent their country on the highest level. So sometimes they feel as if, you know, the country is being ungrateful. And when I say the country, of course, I mean the leaders and those that are put there yeah. to, of course, assist. So I hope that the conversation does not end here. And I also hope, Ricardo, that, mm -hmm. you know, the post that we saw that came after mm -hmm. is not her just, you know, silencing herself now and being quiet. Because I think her coming forward, as you just said, mm -hmm. is a step in the right direction. Sometimes it takes these difficult conversations to move us to some point where, you know, others too can benefit from it. Yeah, completely agree with you. Don't disagree there. Um, 
And it is why it is important to have a clear criteria, because it may be that when you have that criteria, Naoka qualifies, or maybe she doesn't qualify. But at least then, it will be clear to her... And the process appears fair. Yes, and that the is process important. appears fair, and it is clear to her what she needs to do to qualify for the assistance that she is looking for. At this stage, that does not exist. You take the Bahamas, for example, Mariah, where it does exist. There is a tier system in the Bahamas. Barbados, um, while I'm not clear as to exactly how that system works specifically, but I do understand there is a lottery. Uh, the Olympic Association gets a percentage of that, and athletes do benefit financially. Um, and, and there are markers as to how um, you get financial assistance that does not exist at all in the Jamaican landscape. And for me, as I said, that is where the real problem is. And until that is fixed, then we're going to continue to have athletes like Nayoka Clunis coming out and crying foul. Do you think it's more difficult in Jamaica because of no. the fact that y'all so, have so many great no. athletes? No. It's, it's, it, in my opinion, no, because you simply need to sit down um, with the various stakeholders, figure out the athletes or types of athletes who need the support and put together a document and a criteria that will ensure that majority of those athletes get the assistance. And the truth is, you are not going to be able to help everyone. And that is what must be understood, Mara. So you are right. Um, Jamaica has a plethora of athletes. Um, you're not going to be able to help everyone, but allow the process to be clear and fair, and I think we can move forward from there. But at this stage, because there is no clear way um, defined way of how financial assistance is given to athletes, then we have issues like this. So where do we go from here? It's time for the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association to step up and do the right thing. Um, and as I said, I'm very sure that the J3s will tell you that we assist athletes from time to time, but I have a problem with the way it is being done we now need to formalize the way it is being done. And until we do that, then I think the national body is failing in this area of athlete financial support. What about corporate Jamaica? What, what part do they play in all of this, Ricardo? Well, it's, it, it's, it's the job of the National Association to engage corporate Jamaica in... Um, whatever decision that they make or whatever criteria that they put together. Um, so if you say we want to help 30 athletes per year and this is the tier system and this is the type of assistance that we want to give with, to them, then you engage Corporate Jamaica and get the support from that standpoint. Um, corporate Jamaica, if you're talking about individual athletes, um, are looking for athletes who are at the top of their game and who they feel will help them to sell a product. Help their brand, yeah. And, and, and that is perfectly fine. But the National Association has the opportunity to um, garner broader sponsorship that can help more athletes in, a, in, in this area. And that's why it's important that they step up and formalize how um, financial support for athletes um, is dealt with yeah. in, in the land of wood and water. Well, I'm really hoping that Neyoka Clunish, she gets the assistance that she requires. Yeah. I hope the conversation continues. And you know, Mariah, you say Neyoka Clunis, but the problem is there are hundreds of athletes like Clunis who are afraid to come forward and say anything. And that is um, the main reason why it is so important that this is formalized and that it is formalized quickly. Um, Mr. Garth Gale, I know you watch the Sportsman Zone, and if you don't, your friends do, so I'm sure you'll get this message. A little work for you to do, and I'm confident that you will get it done. Yeah, all I'll say is it's time for a break.